When I was five, I fell in love with the stars. Now, I was fortunate to have stumbled across this at a young age, and I soon became enthralled with the idea of becoming an astronaut. Growing up in the state of Ohio, we have a very rich history of space exploration and aviation, so it wasn't too long before I was asking astronauts themselves this question. What should I do to become an astronaut? Now, a lot of answers I got for years were very cookie cutter. Go to school, get good grades, major in a STEM-related subject, and be between 62 and 75 inches tall. <laughs> well, as a five-year-old, I fit none of those, so I was ready to go and have, you know, things to do, right? Well, as I got older, I realized how little information that was to go on. So my story, and the way I wish to tell it today, is that non-cookie cutter answer that I so longed for all those years ago. And I hope maybe it's something that you've been looking for too. My life, your life, they are more than just serendipity. It wasn't luck that led me to earn a scholarship founded by astronauts. It wasn't luck that led me to DC to advocate on behalf of space exploration everywhere. And it wasn't luck that led me to win a competition where I got to train as an astronaut for a week. No, my path to Mars has been successful so far because of three facets of my life that I've worked tirelessly to perfect, to grow in, and then to have the confidence to rely upon when I needed them. So, facet number one, personality. I grew up on the stage. I was singing and acting and dancing, and so naturally I was growing these skills that allowed me to be more comfortable in front of crowds and share my thoughts and my feelings with little to no fear. Little, little fear. <laughs> but beyond that, I also had some wonderful English teachers, shout out to Mr. Mate of Hill Hilliard City Schools in Davidson, where I learned the importance of writing, especially as an engineer. We live in a world where talent is at its easiest to find, thanks to the internet. So what separates me from someone with a pure aptitude for the subject is my ability to communicate and convey my thoughts. No matter what job you want, your skills of communication will always separate you from your peers. So, it's these skills that I attribute to my earning of four internships, all with extensive interview processes, and winning that student astronaut competition where I got to train as an astronaut for a week. It was a three-minute video where I talked about the importance of space exploration, and it was passion, conviction, enthusiasm, and my speaking skills, not any test score, that granted me that opportunity. So, facet number two, civic interests. It wasn't long before I realized the importance that space exploration has on our world. Studies show that for every one dollar that is invested in NASA, one dollar, roughly 10 have come back to enter the US economy. Today, companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX are working to cheapen access to space for other private companies by using reusable rocket <coughs> technologies, launch and land. We are on the cusp of a boom in the space industry, and I knew I wanted to advocate for it, so I found ways to do just that. Each year of my college career, I traveled to Washington, D.C. to advocate for space exploration and NASA funding. I not only was fulfilling my duty as a citizen by being a part of this government process, but I was also finding out that by being there, I was ensuring that my field was not only well represented, but possibly well funded. But it goes beyond just advocacy. I was also learning how to frame my argument with compassion and conviction and empathy for others' possibly convicting opinions. I also learned what it meant to have grace. I learned what it meant to have fundamental experiences in front of other people and learning from them. I built a nationwide network of friends that had helped me grow and learn in my own career. And it wasn't too long before I realized that everyone needed to do more of this. These lessons I learned on Capitol Hill, but we are currently 25 minutes from a state capitol. There's no reason that everyone in this room can't and go and participate and advocate for something they believe in. Now, facet number three. Before I go too far with this one, I do have to admit the first two maybe are a little boring. Maybe you heard of those before. Yeah, personality, okay, be an advocate. But what I've learned as an engineer is that boring usually means it's fundamental the building blocks for everything else. So with that in mind, that's exactly what those two facets are. They're fundamental to my, my, my life. 
But this last facet, this one is both fundamental and entirely rapturous. Love. I have come to realize that by loving what I do, I can never say no to it, no matter how difficult it gets. I've come to realize that there's so much more to life than just a job. Because not every job will be your dream job, and not every aspect of your dream job will be fun or exciting or interesting. Elon Musk is my greatest inspiration today because his life started out with ideas of just how he wanted to better the world, better products for this world. That simple and noble idea caused him to drove him really to make some of the most incredible businesses of this century. Businesses that have changed our lives and the way we operate. That was all because of his love for humanity and his conviction in his ideas. Now, I grew up, my mother always told me that my personality is intense. It's the word she uses. And I think it's because I don't do a lot of things halfway. So when I love, I love entirely. I love Ohio State. I love Ohio State football. I love my friends. I love Coldplay. <laughs> and I love space exploration so much. So much so that this passion and love is what every boss I've ever had comments on first when talking about me. It is not only a privilege to do what I do, but this love is an advantage and an asset in everything I do. So whether, you know, that's, that's you know, the love that I have and that helps my career, right? Well, it goes beyond just our jobs and our careers. Our emotions and our attitudes are contagious. And if you don't believe me, you can watch the nightly news every night and see that it is. So I believe it's my duty to be happy. Because when I'm happy, I'm a much better person to be around. When you love something, your happiness, that is, that is noticeable. You are your happiest you. And when you are your happiest you, your light shines a little bit brighter in this world. And that light, I have come to find, helps others find their own. So whether you love like me with an on-off switch or you have these varying levels of joy in your life, surround yourself with the things that you love because your attitude, your perspective on life, and your success depend on it. I had a lot of opportunities in college to meet a lot of successful people. And I always ask them, you know, what, what about your success do you attribute it to? What, what do you think is uh, the reason? And you'll get answers very common to, oh, well, um, my schooling, my upbringing. And I totally agree. Those are very important things that I've been fortunate to you know, have as well. But those aren't always things that you can control. You know, you, you can't choose your family. You can't always go to the school maybe you thought you wanted to go to. But these facets in your life you can control. So go become a better public speaker, work on those skills. Go try and be a better writer. Go find something to advocate for. But most importantly, go fall in love. Because that love that you have will fuel you for the rest of your life. Thank you.